Welcome back to the Getting Started with Felt series. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the spatial analysis tools. So first up, we have bounds. I have a new felt map set up here. I'm gonna click on the layers button at the top, and this is gonna bring up one of my favorite features in felt, that is this built-in library of data sets with which you can work. I'm gonna search keyword birds, so I can bring up this US endangered and endemic birds set. I'm gonna click on this plus icon to add it to my map and you can see how snappy and fast that was. So here's our new layer. I'm gonna click on it on the legend here. That's gonna bring up the style editor over here. And at the top, you can see this new button, which is the transformation. Click on this. This is gonna bring up the new layout. And there's a drop down menu here showing me all eight new tools. So I'm gonna grab bounds up here. And what this is gonna do, this will generate a rectangular polygon around each feature of my layer. It's essentially a bounding box. This is a great way to simplify features to broad coverage areas. So I've already got the layer selected here. I can specify if I wanna to apply to the entire layer or just features that are showing up on screen. The reason I might wanna use features on screen is that if I'm in a scenario where I'm working with a huge global data set and I wanna keep processing time down, I would, I would select this. I can also rename the output layer and it's telling us right here, the processing is gonna take under a minute, which is great. Click apply and now it will process. And there you go, we now have our simplified polygons as a new layer with bounding boxes. Next up is buffer, which for each feature of the layer you select will generate a polygon covering an area within a specified distance. So for this map, I wanna look at New York City and I'm gonna to go to my layer library. If you wanna use a keyboard shortcut to grab this, just hold shift and hit L and that will bring it up. Now I'm gonna type in keyword New York and I'm gonna grab the city subway system data set, just click on add. And now what I wanna do is I wanna show basically 1000 meters from each point right here, we have the stops and the entrances. So if I grab the layer here, right now, if we look at the visualization for drop down menu, we have the stops selected, which is just fine. And I'm gonna go click on transform and select buffer. Under settings, I'm gonna type in 1000 meters, and then I'll just quickly rename my output layer and apply. And there we go, now I can grab this layer and make some quick style adjustments. Let's turn these to a blue maybe and bring the opacity way down. Beautiful. Be aware that you can also run buffer on lines and polygons for some incredibly powerful visualizations. Centroid will take each feature of your layer and draw a point in the center of it, which is really useful when you need to convert geographic data in the form of areas or lines into the simpler form of points. So in this example, I'm gonna hit Shift and L to bring up my layer library, and I'm gonna search keyword forest and find this US Forest Service data set. I'm gonna add this to the map. And what I wanna do is I wanna draw a point out for each forest and then categorize those by size. So I'm gonna grab the layer here and I'll go ahead and click transform. And now I will drop down to centroid and we wanna create a centroid for each feature of the forest, not the trails. And that's looking great. We wanna apply it to the entire layer, that's fine. And you can see right here, it's telling us once again, this is gonna be under a minute, so that's great. Go ahead and apply that transformation. All right, great, that only took about under 10 seconds as well. Now I wanna style these, so I'll select the layer. They're already green, which is great. I just need to go under general and type and switch this to size range. And there you go, now we're starting to get a cool visual here. Make sure you go to the size by category and drop down and select GIS acres. Very cool. Next up is clip. This is gonna allow us to keep only the parts of each feature that are inside polygons from another layer. Now, as an example, I'm gonna bring up the layer library here and search for power plant. We have this global power plant database right here. I'll add that to my map. And let's say we just wanna see these assets within Australia. So I need to create a layer for Australia. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this extract tool and this is gonna allow me to just pull this element straight from the map and it pulls it as an element right here. So the way that transformations work, they only work on layers. You see that we can't do this with an element. So I need to right click on it and go to actions, convert to layer. So I'll quickly rename this. And now I can select transform and grab clip. And I wanna cut out the data from my global power plant database. And I want to cut it out where it overlaps with Australia. And we'll rename this, we'll call it 
power plants in Australia. Now I'm going to turn off the visibility of our global data set and Australia as well. And you can see I now have this new set that is just within the boundaries of Australia. I need to go back and restyle these based on category and we're going to color them by their primary fuel again. And there we go. Now I can select whatever color palette I want to go with here. And there you have it, clip. Next up we have count points. As the name implies, this is gonna allow us to count the points within a specific polygon. I'll hit Shift L to bring up the layer library. I'm gonna search states, and let's grab the US states, and I'm also gonna grab a data set for all the libraries in the entire world. And what I wanna do here is I wanna show the number of libraries per state. So we're gonna count the points in each of the US state polygons. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the US states, We'll go click on transform, open up the drop down menu and select count points. And right here it says for each polygon of the US states, which is correct, we're gonna count the points in libraries. And that's great. Everything else is looking fine. It says it's gonna process this in under a minute, which is great as usual. I'm gonna click apply and let this process. There we go. Now I have a new layer of state polygons with the number of libraries contained within it. And what's very cool about this is I can now go to labels Click on the plus icon to add labels, and we can now label these based on the point count right here. Check that out, that's cool. Now I can basically turn off the visibility of this one we want, and we can style this however we see fit. Now let's take a look at Dissolve. This will allow us to basically combine overlapping or contiguous polygons. For this example, I'm gonna come over here to one of my favorite countries, Iceland, and I'm gonna go grab the glaciers data set right here, add this to my map. We have all these individual polygons for all these different glaciers here in Iceland. So I wanna combine these into one individual polygon, keep it nice and clean. So I'm gonna grab the layer here and I'll go click transform and I'll go to the drop down menu and I'm going to select dissolve. And once the preview comes up, you'll see that it's looking much cleaner here. It's combining all of these. I wanna make sure that I'm applying it to only the features on screen, because again, this is a global data set. If I were to select entire layer, the processing time is gonna take much longer. So I'll go down to the output of the name here, and I'll rename it Glaciers in Iceland. And once again, beautiful, it's gonna take under a minute. I love it. There we go, now we have our new layer. We'll just go back over here and change the color back to a blue. And there you have it, glaciers in Iceland. Intersect will allow you to keep features that are overlapping between two layers. So I'm gonna go to the layer library here and let's go grab this data set, Peaks and Summits from OpenStreetMap. And then I'll also grab National Parks. We wanna see all the peaks in the US national parks here. So I have these two layers now. I'll go grab US national parks, click on transform, go down to intersect, and we wanna create new features from peaks and summits where it overlaps national park boundaries. And then we can call it peaks and summits and national parks. This data set is a little bit bigger, so it's gonna take just a little bit longer to process. All right, it's done processing. I'm gonna turn the visibility of the original layer off and I'm going to quickly style the new peaks and summits based on category. And then we're gonna basically style it by unit name. And there you have it. Now when I zoom into Rocky Mountain National Park, you can see that the intersect worked very well actually. Last but not least, we have subtract. And as the name implies, this allows you to subtract one feature from another. So let's say that I just want to view the national parks of the United States isolated with a satellite background. So I'm gonna go change the background up here to satellite. And what I'm gonna do here is essentially draw out a polygon that I can then change the color of, basically creating a mask. So what I'm gonna do is open up the layer library via Shift L, and I'm gonna search for this US National Parks data set again. We'll add that. And then I'm also gonna look for the US states and we'll add that as well. And now all I need to do is grab the US states and we want these to be, we can style these once we have our new layer, but we're gonna grab this one, go to transform and then select subtract. We wanna remove the features from the US states where they overlap with the National Park Service boundaries. And then we'll call the output mask, click apply. Now let's let that process. Now I have a layer of the continental US with the national parks cut out, which creates a mask effect. 
Now I can grab this mask layer and style it however I want the background to be. So if I just want to have a darker background, I can place it like this. I'll go to the stroke and I will turn that off. I'll zoom in and quickly turn off the visibility of the original two layers here, US States and US National Parks. And I'll make sure that the opacity is at 100. Now if I zoom in here, we have Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons with a mask effect applied. And naturally you can adjust this mask to whatever you want. So if we want it to be, you know, show the background a little bit, you can do something like this. Which is looking much better. And this just gives you a little more control. Here's Yosemite. You know, if I want to label these a little bit later using some other tool, I can always come in here and turn off the labels if I want to create my own labels using the text tool. Pretty cool. So there you have it, eight new transformation tools in Felt 2.0. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to check out the next episode where I'm gonna to touch on sharing and collaboration.